assalamu alaikum students this is the fifth session of the past paper questions from chapter waves sound and general wave properties and in this fifth session we will discuss more questions related to the related to the chapter waves sound and electromagnetic waves so students the is taken from year 2013 october november paper 22 in this question a physics textbook state that sound is a longitudinal pressure wave with a frequency within the audible range now you need to explain what is mean by a longitudinal wave so we all studied that the longitudinal wave is a wave in which the medium particles vibrates or oscillates parallel to the direction of wave motion and in longitudinal wave the medium particles moves forward and backward to the direction of wave motion and when the medium particles moves forward so the air particles near the near the sound producing source pushes and a higher pressure region compression is produced and when the sound producing source moves backward so the air particles near the sound producing source pushes away and a low pressure region rarefaction is produced now students in b question in part b1 state the approximate range of audible frequencies so the highest frequency range for the audible sound is 20000 hertz and the lowest frequency for the audible sound is 20 hertz now part 2 in this part the speed of the sound in air is given to you which is 330 meter per second now use your answer in part 1 calculate the shortest wavelength in air of sound in the audible range so students we all know that for the calculation we need to use the wave equation and according to the wave equation the wavelength is inversely proportional to the frequency so the examiner demands uh, demands you to calculate the shortest wavelength so for the calculation of shortest wavelength you need to you need to take the value for the frequency you need to take the value for the frequency which is high, highest frequency so for the calculation of wavelength we use the value for frequency which is 20000 hertz so when you divide 330 by 20000 you will get the value for wavelength which is 0.0165 meter now students the next question is taken from paper october november paper 21 2014 in this question ripple tanks are often used to illustrate wave motions because we use ripple tanks to study the wave motions or to demonstrate the phenomena of reflection and refraction occurs in a water waves now part a describe what is mean by wave motion in a ripple tank so students how a wave motion how a wave move in a ripple tank or the, what is mean by the wave motion in a ripple tank so the wave motion is in a ripple tank is the transfer of energy through vibration of medium particles because in ripple tank the water is present and when the oscillators strikes the surface of the water so the water particles which is also known as medium particles starts vibration and waves moves or the motion of waves takes place and the wave motion also transfer energy from one end of the ripple tank to the other end that's why you need to write down the reason which is transfer of energy through vibration of medium particles part b when describing wave motion state what is mean by frequency so students the frequency is defined as number of complete waves produced in a second now what is mean by wavelength so the wavelength is the distance between two consecutive crust or trough now in this question the examiner talks about the transverse wave because in ripple tanks we study water wave and water wave is a transverse wave so when you define the wavelength so you need to use the term two consecutive crust or trough instead of compression or rarefaction so the wavelength is defined as the distance between two consecutive crust or trough now part c a ripple tank a water wave in a ripple tank strikes a barrier as shown in figure 4.1 and figure 4.1 also shows some wave fronts of the incident wave so the direction of incident wave is shown by the arrow by a black arrow and the wave incident wave fronts strikes on the barrier and we all know that when the wave fronts strikes on the barrier so they get reflected after striking through barrier now student the water wave hits the barrier and is reflected three of the wave fronts in figure 4.1 have already hit the barrier the reflected part of these wave fronts are not shown now on figure 4.1 you need to draw the reflected parts of these three wave fronts so student we all know that 
the first law of reflection which is the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection so first you need to draw the normal at the point of incident and then you draw the arrow which shows the direction of reflected wave fronts and the angle between incident wave front and incident incident wave fronts and reflected wave fronts remain same as shown on the diagram so when you draw the reflect arrow which shows the direction of reflected wave fronts so you need to draw the wave fronts shown by or drawn by blue color and these wave fronts which are known as reflected wave fronts are perpendicular to the arrow which shows the direction of the reflected wave front so black arrow se aapne direction show kari ke bhai incident waves jab strike karengi barrier par so wo reflect hongi is direction mein jo ki aapne show ki hai black arrow se aur phir ye jo arrow jo ke reflected wave fronts ki direction ko show kar raha hai iske perpendicular aapne apne wave fronts kya kar diye students draw kar diye kyunki dekhe teen wave fronts jo hain wo barrier pe strike kar rahe the so isi liye aapne kya karna hai teen wave fronts hi reflected direction mein draw karne hai Now the next question is taken from October November paper 21 2014 in this question the device shown in figure 5.1 uses the reflection of ultrasound to measure distances now what state what is mean by ultrasound so student ultrasound is the sound having frequency greater than or above 20000 hertz part b figure 5.2 shows a builder using the ultrasound device to measure the width of a room Now the ultrasound device is placed against one wall and it emits an ultrasound wave that reflects back from the opposite wall. The time between sending out the ultrasound and receiving the reflection is 0.030 second yani 0.30 0.030 seconds mein ultrasound jo hai wo device se nikal raha hai yani ek wall se nikal ke dusri wall pe strike karke wapas reflect back ho raha hai. और अल्ट्रासाउंड की जो स्पीड है एयर में वो 340 मीटर पर सेकंड है नाउ यू नीड टू कैलकुलेट द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द डिवाइस एंड द अपोजिट वॉल सो स्टूडेंट फॉर द कैलकुलेशन ऑफ स्पीड वी नीड टू यूज एन इक्वेशन व्हिच इज डिस्टेंस इज इक्वल टू स्पीड टाइम्स स्पीड मल्टीप्लाई बाय टाइम नाउ एट द प्लेस ऑफ स्पीड यू राइट 340 एंड एट द प्लेस ऑफ टाइम यू नीड टू यूज द वैल्यू By dividing 0.030 seconds by 2, यानी आपको टाइम को हाफ करना पड़ेगा क्यों क्योंकि ये जो टाइम है ये वो टाइम गिवन है जो डिवाइस से अल्ट्रासाउंड निकल के वॉल पे टकरा के वापस रिफ्लेक्ट बैक हो रहा है सो यू नीड टू मेक दिस टाइम हाफ सो आपने डिवाइड करा है टाइम को 2 से और फिर उसको मल्टीप्लाई करा है स्पीड से सो यू विल गेट द वैल्यू फॉर द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन डिवाइस एंड द अपोजिट वॉल विच इज फाइव पॉइंट वन मीटर Now the next question is taken from October November paper 21 2015 in this question audible sound waves and ultrasound waves both consist of compressions and rarefactions describe one difference between a compression and the rarefaction so students we all studied that compression is a higher pre air pressure region while rarefaction is a lower air pressure region part b in a particular medium the speed of both audible sound and ultrasound is v state the equation that relates the wavelength lambda of a sound wave to its frequency f so the equation is known as wave equation and the wave equation is v is equal to f lambda speed is equal to frequency times wavelength part 2 explain how in this medium the wavelength of an audible wave sound wave compares with the wavelength of an ultrasound wave so student we all know that the audible the frequency of the audible sound wave is lower than the frequency of ultrasound wave so frequency is inversely proportional to wavelength it means the wavelength of audible sound wave is great larger than the wavelength of ultrasound wave so you need to write down this reason that the wavelength of an audible sound is larger because the frequency of audible sound is lower than ultrasound because frequency and wavelength both are inversely proportional to each other according to wave equation part c describe one use of ultrasound wave student the ultrasound waves are used in prenatal scanning in which we use ultrasound waves to produce the image of un of underdeveloped fetus present inside the womb of a woman यानी आपके पास जो बेबी डेवलप हो रहा होता है होता है तो उसको कह लें कि उसको मॉनिटर करने के लिए उसकी डेवलपमेंट को हम अल्ट्रासाउंड यूज करते हैं एंड दिस प्रोसेस इज नोन एज प्री नेटल स्कैनिंग नाउ द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज टेकिंग फ्रॉम अक्टूबर नवंबर टू पेपर टू वन टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन इन दिस क्वेश्चन फिगर फाइव पॉइंट वन शोज अ लाउड स्पीकर प्लेस इन साइड अ ग्लास बेल जार एंड ग्लास बेल जार कंटेन्स एयर एंड अ वैक्यूम पंप पंप इज कनेक्टेड एट द बॉटम ऑफ द गैस जार एंड वी ऑल नो दैट द वैक्यूम पंप इज यूज टू रिमूव द एयर प्रेजेंट इन साइड द बेल जार 
Now the loudspeaker produces a sound of frequency 2200 hertz. Now state what is mean by the frequency of a sound. So the frequency of a sound is defined as number of complete waves produced in a second. B part 1. The speed of sound in air is 330 meter per second. You need to calculate the wavelength of sound in the air. So for the calculation of wavelength, we use wave equation which is wavelength is equal to speed divided by frequency. So when you divide 330 by 2200, you will get the value for wavelength which is 0.15 meter. Part 2. The sound passes from air into the glass. State what happens to the sound. So students, when, when the sound enters from air into the glass, so glass is, glass is a solid and the speed of sound is greater in solids and lower in gases. So when the air enters, when the sound waves enters from air into the glass, so the speed of the sound wave increases but the frequency of the sound wave remains constant. So state what happens to the frequency of the sound? No change in the frequency of the sound. But when we talk about the speed of the sound, so the speed of the sound increases. Now see part 1. Describe how sound is produced by the loudspeaker. So students, we all know that the sound is produced by the loudspeaker when the loudspeaker vibrates forward and backward. Now part 2. How sound is transmitted through the air. So students, when the loudspeaker vibrates forward, so the loudspeaker pushes the air particles present near, near it and the air particles move closer to each other. And when the sound, when the loudspeaker vibrates backward, so it pull away the air particles near it and the air particle moves away from each other and a compression and rarefaction is produced. Now part 2. A pump is connected to the tube at the bottom of the glass bell jar. The pump is switched on and it removes the air from the glass bell jar. Explain why the volume of the sound heard outside the bell, glass bell jar decreases. So student, we studied that the sound for the, the sound waves needs medium particle for their propagation. So when the medium particle oscillates parallel to the direction of wave motion, so sound wave produ sounds produced or propagate. So when you start, when you switch on the vacuum pump, so vacuum pump draws out the air present inside the bell jar. So the amount or the number of air particles present inside the glass bell jar decreases and this decreases the volume of the sound. So the number of air particle inside the bell jar decreases or become less. That's why the volume of the sound heard outside the glass bell jar also decreases. The prism. As shown on the diagram, this is the theta and you need to calculate this value. So how you can calculate this value? Students, the angle between the normal and the ray is given to you which is equal to the angle of incidence 49. And the normal angle between normal and the surface of the prism is 90 degree. So when you subtract 49 from 90 degree, you will get the value for th which is 41 degree. Now the laser in B is replaced with a Fleming lamp and a slit as shown in figure 10.2. Now student, the Fleming lamp produces a light after passing through the slit when the light strikes the prism. So we all know that when the light enters into the prism, so the prism splits the light into its component. So on figure 10.1, draw what happens to the light as it passes through the prism and strikes the screen. So we all know that the light splits into its component. So you need to draw the light in such a way as I draw on this diagram or show you on the diagram on figure 10.2. So at the upper portion, the red light is present and at the bottom, blue light is present. Now student describe what is seen on the screen. So what is seen on the screen? Colors of rainbow. So you rainbow colors will look at you. That means rainbow colors will look at you. And what will happen in those colors? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue. And from blue, you will have the color of blue. Which one is indigo violet? Part 3. In addition to visible light, the Fleming lamp also emits some infrared radiations. This infrared radiation is able to pass through the glass. On, screen, on the screen, in figure 10.2, mark an X to indicate a place where infrared radiation strikes the screen. So student, the colors, the rainbow colors are showing on the screen is in the region of visible light. And before visible light, infrared radiation comes. So you need to place the mark X above the red light as shown on the diagram. Now part 2. Infrared radiation is often detected by using a sensitive thermometer with a bulb that has been painted black. Explain why the blackened bulb makes the thermometer a good detector of infrared radiation. Because the black surfaces are the good absorber of infrared radiation. That's why 
we make the bulb blackened so that the bulb absorbs more infrared radiations. Part D, explain the role played by infrared radiation in intruder alarm. So students, in intruder, uh, in intruder alarm, a transmitter of infrared radiation is installed and also a receiver is installed. So when human being passes through the device, so the infrared radiation strikes the body of the human and reflects. Or in other words, we can say that the infrared beam is stopped by the human and does not reach the receiver. So the device starts to alarm and indicate the presence of an intruder. This is how the intruder alarms work. So students, this is all for the fifth session of the past paper questions of chapter wave sound and general, general wave properties and electromagnetic spectrum. So thank you for attending this lecture and listening to my videos. So I hope you will all understand the questions which I discussed with you. Thank you once again. Allah Hafiz.